Nothing has been easy for us. It's been a difficult uphill task. Beating Calgary is not going to be an easy task either, but beat them we must. Being a rookie and playing in Toronto's first Grey Cup in 19 years is truly an honor and a pleasure. And being able to play against such a great team as the Calgary Stampeders is also an honor and a pleasure. Our main objective this year is to bring the Grey Cup back to Toronto. It's amazing uh, how closely the uh, two clubs ended up statistically uh, for the entire season. Uh, two great defensive clubs, two offensive clubs that are capable of scoring a lot of points should make a tremendous football game. I think we'll be ready today for the game against the Toronto Argonauts. They've got a real tough defense. We've been to the Grey Cup twice before and lost, and this time we want to take the Grey Cup back to Calgary. In 62 years that the Grey Cup has been up for competition, there have been some tremendous football games. None has been more eagerly awaited than the 1971 battle between the Calgary Stampeders and the Toronto Argonauts. Hello everybody, I'm Pat Marsden, and this afternoon I have the great pleasure and honor of being your host for this 1971 Grey Cup Classic. The Argos haven't won it since 1952. The Stampeders haven't won since 1948. This is going to be a tremendous struggle. And with me to co-host this afternoon is Ernie Afaganis, the Golden Greek. Ernie, what's happening down at field level? Thank you, Pat, and uh, well, it's rain. You know, apart from the festivities all week long, the main worry has been rain. They've been wondering if the rain would dampen the festivities and the game and everything that surrounds the game itself. Well, the weatherman did not cooperate. It has uh, been raining since about 8.30 this morning. They've rolled about 5,000 tons of water off the field, and it still keeps coming. But the temperature is about, go oh, 40 degrees. The skies are very, very wet. And we hope that the wind, the wind will stay down the way it is right now and hope that the rain will ease off and give the ball players a chance to perform because it should be a very good ball game. And incidentally, for the first time in a long, long time, a ball game will be played on a very good field. Back up to you, Pat. Thank you, Ernie. And I'll tell you, you just cannot believe the air of excitement that surrounds all of Vancouver today and particularly here at Empire Stadium. The reason we're here is to watch the Calgary Stampeders and the Toronto Argonauts. But Ernie, there's a lot of pregame festivities. No question about it, Pat, and that is supplied by Dal Richards and his famous band from Vancouver. And they've been performing for the past five or six minutes. Let's take a look at them. They're going to do a medley on rain, and it certainly fits the day. Dal Richards and his band with the Majorettes and the Lioness.
Grace McDonald, the choreographer, the Majorettes, Dell Richards and his band who represent Toronto today. And, of course, the Majorettes also will be representing the city of Toronto in this Grey Cup final. Now the officials will go to the center of the field with the team captains. There will be the coin toss. The decision will be made by the teams as to whether to accept the ball and take the field. Pat, up to you. Well, Ernie, I'll tell you, by sheer numbers, the Argonauts are going to try and overwhelm Wayne Harris, the defensive captain of the Calgary Stampeders. You'll notice going out there with referee Harry Ross and line umpire Don King are Marv Luster, Dave Ramey, Bill Simons, and Mel Prophet of the Argos. Now, of course, whoever wins the toss will have the option of doing what they would like to do. Let's go to field level. The Toronto Argonauts, as you see, as indicated by referee Harry Ross, have won the toss, and they will receive. They will defend the goal to your right. The Calgary Stampeders will kick off, and they will defend the area moving from left to right. Now, of course, it is an extremely important factor, the coin toss, because it dictates very early in the ball game what is exactly going to happen. The Argos were hoping that they would win, because they'd like to establish their offense. They feel that it's never really been all put together this year, but this is the game for all the pieces to fit. Well, and now it's time for the Calgary Band to perform. Uh, this band has been together for about a year and a half or so, and uh, they're under the direction of the leader, Ray McLeod. They're on the far side of the field and ready to go.
with me the Western Supervisor of Officials, Paul Dojak, and on my left, Eastern Supervisor of Officials, Hap Schuldeis. Hap, will you introduce the officials for today's game? I will. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, the referee, Mr. Harry Ross, number 18, from Lachine, Quebec. Mr. Don King, number 12, the line umpire from Winnipeg. Mr. Bill Dell, number 25, the back umpire from Oshawa. Mr. Lauren Woods, number 38, the head linesman from Ottawa. Mr. Sid Burkoff, number 17, the field judge from Edmonton. Mr. Jim Lysak, number 27, the standby official from Regina. Thank you very much, Half Shoulder Ice. Now let's go back up to Pat Marsden. All right, well, Ernie, and there you have the introduction of the officials who will handle the 1971 Grey Cup game. There's a tremendous amount of activity being generated on the field right now. The Calgary Band is there. So is Dal Richards' band and the Beefeaters' band. Everybody moving into position. And you can't believe the sea of color. As we notice coming in from the far end, probably the most colorful of all the young ladies who will be with us today, what a little beauty she is. Miss Grey Cup, the former Miss Montreal Alouette, Deborah Barbagello. And of all the girls that have won in the past, Deborah probably is the most charming and personable little creature we've ever seen. She's five feet, five and a half inches tall. She weighs 119 pounds, and she's got the most bubbly personality, as you'll note when she steps out of that car and has a little chat with the commissioner of the CFL, Jay Kadar. And it is definitely a highlight of Grey Cup Week, the selection of the fairest of them all. Funny thing about Deborah, she was Mont Miss Montreal Alouette, but she was selected on the final day that the Owls played a home game. And since they didn't make the playoffs, she was really only Miss Montreal Alouette for that short period of time. And came to Vancouver, and walked off with it all. And as I noted, she is going to be met by the commissioner of the CFL, Miss Grey Cup, Deborah Barbagallo. She's in her third year at Montreal's Viola College and is studying for a BA degree in political science. I think we're all set now for the player introductions. The Toronto Argonauts will be introduced first. And now introducing the starting lineup of the Eastern champion Toronto Argonauts offensive team. At right end, number 75, Mel Prophet. At right tackle, number 60, Danny Nikolak. At right guard, number 57, Charlie Bray. The center. Number 44, Paul Desjardins. At left guard, number 59, Joe Bajak. The left tackle, number 65, Ellison Kelly. The left end, 72, Jim Henderson. At flanker back, number nine, Mike Eben. At 
And the slot back, number 16, Dave Cranmer. The running backs, wearing number 33, Bill Simon. And running back number 24, Leon McQuay. And finally, the quarterback, number seven, Joe Theismann. Toronto Argonauts, offensive team. This is the first time the Argos have ever played a Grey Cup game away from home. All previous appearances would be, of course, at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. And now, introducing the Western champion, Calgary Stampeders. This is the offensive team at right end. Number 76, Herman Harrison. At right tackle, number 63, Lanny Valeski. At right guard, number 51, Granny Ligon. At center, number 45, Basil Park. The left guard, number 57, John Atamian. At left tackle, number 52, Herbie Shum. Number 20 at left end, John Henderson. The left halfback, wearing number 17, Rudy Linderman. Right halfback, number 19, Jesse Mim. At fullback, wearing 31, Hugh McKinnis. The flanker, wearing number 72, Jerry Shaw. And the quarterback, number 10, Jerry Keeley. Calgary Stampeder offensive team, Pat, and it's a good one. Now back up to you. Well, Ernie, I'll tell you, there's just an air of excitement here, and I think that uh, you could probably determine from the sound that many people are cheering for the Calgary Stampeders, but the Argonauts, I know, are ready. We'll be back with the ceremonial kickoff in just a moment. Now arriving from the west side of the field is the Vice Regal Party, and in just a few moments, we're going to have our ceremonial kickoff. The Governor General, His Excellency, the... Right Honorable Roland Michener is here to perform that official duty today with many dignitaries on hand, including the Prime Minister of British Columbia, Mr. Bennett, the Prime Minister of Ontario, Mr. Davis, Premier Lougheed of Alberta, Mayor Tom Campbell of Vancouver, Mayor Rod Sykes of Calgary. is being met now and introduced by the Commissioner of the CFL, Mr. Jake Goddard. Governor General looks fit. He's waving to the crowd. They tell me that he's been taking this very seriously, this official kickoff, that he's been working out at it in Ottawa, and he'd like to come through, see if he can't even surpass something like 40 yards. Apparently he has been kicking and he's predicted that he will boot at 40 yards. He's got both an Argonaut and a Calgary Stampeder sticker. 
And now let's go down to field level and Richard Garneau. Your keen uh, interest uh, in fitness is well known. How would you describe the uh, importance uh, of the Grey Cup uh, as a single event in the overall Canadian way of life? Well, I think I'd have to take it as a double event. It seems to me it's developed in two ways. There's uh, first the great uh, Canadian Sporting Festival, which everybody knows and enjoys, uh, which um, brings pilgrims from every part of Canada, uh, but perhaps does very little for their fitness. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, there's the, there's the game itself between the two best uh, football teams in Canada, selected um, after four months of play in the major league. And uh, it uh, undoubtedly uh, is great entertainment for all Canadians. And I think, too, that it does inspire the young to try to play the game. And uh, it inspires them by showing them what skill, strength, and uh, stamina is needed to be a good football player. Excellence, parce que le sport est international et que les seules barrières sont les règles du jeu lui-même, est-ce que vous croyez que le sport euh, est euh, vraiment un bon véhicule pour euh, une meilleure compréhension entre euh, tous les hommes Oui, euh, en principe, je suis d'accord, M. Ganon. Euh, par exemple, euh, les Jeux Can euh, Canada d'hiver à Saskatoon, euh, il y a quelques mois, et les Jeux d'été Canada... Halifax en 69 aussi. Oui, ont euh, stimulé euh, une bonne solidarité de collectivité au Canada, euh, euh, ainsi euh, parmi les athlètes comme euh, parmi les spectateurs, je pense. Excellence, merci infiniment et bon succès. Merci. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, there are just so many people down at field level right now. We've got all the bands on the field. The Governor General and the Commissioner are moving to the center field area. The cameraman will be down in front, and in the event that he doesn't get it up in the air, we could have our first injury of the afternoon. But they tell me he's really been working hard on it, and it's become a matter of personal pride now. Our statistician, Bob Layden, is all set. He's going to give us the figure the moment that the ball gets in the air. The Argonauts are standing by. The Stampeders are there, too. Referee Harry Ross is making sure that the tee is properly lined up. And now the Governor General, as you can see, he has been working it out. He's taken three steps back. And there it is. Thirty-two yards. Now... I know that I couldn't kick the ball 32 yards with my suit on. The Governor General looked like he got a pretty good leg in there. Let's uh, take a slow-mo look at that. We see the form once again. That good snap in the leg and really followed through. That's the best one I've ever seen. And I'll tell you, you can just see that these two football clubs are tense. Stampeders are jumping around a little bit, trying to relieve some of the tension. The Argos are just standing there. And now we're set for our national anthem.
Referee Harry Ross has made the presentation to the Governor General. And listen to that crowd. It would appear that most are for the Calgary Stampeders, but we've got signs up for Don Jonas, number one on the far side of the field. Tremendous amount of electricity in the air. The bands are marching off the field. The Argos are now starting to dance on their sidelines. The Rough Riders and the Stampeders are both on the field. We are just moments away from the 1971 Grey Cup Classic and here to bring you all the color and the activities and festivities. Johnny Esau, Dick Shadow. Thank you very much, Pat. Hello again, everybody. Uh, Dick, it is an electri electrifying moment. The Toronto Argonauts have sent back Bill Simons, Leon McQuay, and Dave Ramey. A tremendous amount of speed back there for this opening kickoff. The Calgary Stampeders all-time great veteran, Larry Robinson, number 15, waiting for the field to clear so that he can make that kickoff. Well, John, it doesn't matter whether you played this game for uh, 17 years or one year. The excitement and the enthusiasm and the nervousness is with you until you catch that opening kickoff and you make that first tackle. Then you relax and start doing the things that you've been doing all season long. There had been some speculation as to whether or not Leo Cahill would insert Leon McQuay back to his uh, kickoff return team. He was there earlier in the season and then for the latter part of the season was not there. Play has to be held up momentarily while the end of the field is cleared. Only five of the Toronto Argonauts have had previous Grey Cup experience. The Cal Calgary Stampeders, following the fanfare indicating His Excellency has now reached the Royal Box. And now we are about to get this game underway. Robinson and the kickoff. Dave Ramey. Hold down by Joe Forzani, number 73, and Lanny Bolesky, number 63. And the ball will be placed at the 26-yard line. The Toronto Argonauts will set up offensively a 21-yard kick on a 59-yard return. Toronto, Theisman, 7, Simons, 33, McRae, 24, even 9, Cranmer, 16. The backfield. Top at 75, the tight end, Henry's 72, split. First down, Toronto at their own 26. Bill Simon moves over the 31-yard line, stopped by the safety man, Starks, picking up very close to six yards on the play. But an early test to see where Wayne Harris would be lining up in, against that Toronto running attack, Dick. Well, they did. They went back to the weak side, and it was a good block by Ellison Kelly that uh, helped spring Bill Simons loose for the yardage. Ball is just over the 31-yard line. It'll be second down and five to go for Toronto. Wiseman had a mix-up in the backfield. He was bumped by Simons as he started to come out of there. And never could get the playoff. And so the loss is 10 yards. It'll be third down and 14. Well, as you mentioned, John, there was a mix-up in the backfield. The idea of this play is to get the halfback over as quickly as he possibly can to help block for uh, Joe Theismann on that play. It looked as if uh, the back sort of forgot what they were supposed to do. And then, of course, Dick Suderman sealed everything off. So Zenon Andersichen from the Toronto seven yard line, third and 14. That was taken by Sillier. Sillier is dropped by Joe Vijuk at the Calgary Stampeder 53 yard line. That's a 37 yard kick and a two yard return. Andersichen, who averaged 43.8 yards on the season, gets the first punt of the game away for 37 yards. Calgary. Keating 10, McKinnis 31, Mims 19, Linderman number 17, and Shaw 72, the backfield. First down. Keating. Pops the ball away. And let's see who's got it. The whistle has blown. The ball is dead. One thing that they were concerned about was the wet ball. 
Well, I hope we get a chance to take a look at that again because uh, the officials called it as if it was a pass, but uh, you judge for yourself here. You see the ball just pops away from Jerry Keeling. He didn't look like he had it at all, and uh, Marv Lester came in, and uh, I guess he figured that uh, he had a little motion to that. The ball was wet. It popped up there, so it still remains uh, Calgary's ball. Well, the referee has said that he threw the football. He did not fumble it, and as a result, the Calgary Stampeders will be second down and 10 to go at the Calgary 53-yard line. Mims. And Mims is dropped by the safety man, Marv Luster, as he moved to the Toronto Argonaut 52-yard line. That's a gain of five yards on the play. And they will send out Peter Paquette, number 17, and number 15, Harry Abobs, to receive the punt. Jim Furlong. The average 39.9 on the regular season. It's a low one away. Paquette. And he is met down there by five Calgary Stampeders at the 17, 18-yard line. And so on the first two exchanges, we've had problems with quarterbacks handling the football. And on that 41-yard kick with an eight-yard return, the Toronto Argonauts will take over first and 10 at the Toronto 18-yard line. Number 65, Kelly at left tackle. 60, Nikoluk at right tackle. Take was to McQuay. Even can't get it. Mike Even was the intended receiver. And Howard Starks, who is termed by Coach Duncan as the best safety man in the league, is apparently going to have a lot of work cut out for him this afternoon trying to cover the likes of Even, Henderson, and so on. If they're, they're, they're both teams have so far registered a complaint with the official about the wet ball, but they are exchanging on every play. Dry ball comes in, and the, and the official will hold the towel over it until he has to place it down to keep it as dry as possible. Second and ten, Toronto. Eisman has dropped the game back at the 17-yard line. And Fred James, the defensive tackle, was in there to get him. The loss will be one yard on the play. Well, it really depends on uh, how the quarterbacks are going to go as to how the offensive line holds everybody out there. You notice that uh, right off the bat, uh, we had a rush there by Dick Suderman who got in uh, on uh, Joe Theismann to initially slow him up, and uh, consequently he just couldn't get that pass up. Andresition got a high one up to Sillier at the midfield stripe. Sillier is driven out at the 52-yard line by Charlie Bray, number 57. Or is Calgary nothing, Toronto nothing. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in a moment. A trim tremendous number of fans from all over Canada have arrived in Vancouver for this 60th Grey Cup Championship. Matter of fact, we have a record 393 accredited in press, radio, and television this year. First down, Calgary at the 53. Mims. And Jim Stillwagon broke through there to grab him and pull him down for a loss. Back at the 53-yard line. That's a five-yard loss. Jim Stillwagon, number 68, the defensive right tackle. Stillwagon, who was a Lombardi Trophy, an Outland Trophy winner, is a will look at uh, Granville Liggins, the offensive guard, who was also an Outland Trophy winner in top college football in the United States. Martin goes in to replace 31, Dick Aldridge. Second and 15 at the Calgary 52. Keeling, and it's to Linderman. Way 
down to the 31-yard line. Jerry Keeling made a tremendous effort in getting that ball away for a 27-yard gain because he was hit and he was going down. Well, I don't know if this is the same play that uh, Hal Edwards had uh, drawn up for us on the forecast show, but what it really was was, uh, uh, and Hal assures me that it was the same play, and you watch Jerry Keeling on this half roll out. He gets to the outside. Rooney Litterman is coming from the far side there, and he just finds that open spot in between everybody and picks up the big yardage. 23-year-old Rudy Lindemann giving them 27 yards. First down at the 30. Mims. Popped at the 25-yard line. He was chased across the way by Jim Stillwagon. And the gain is five. It is second down and five for Calgary. Larry Brain, number 52, the middle linebacker, who took over with two games left in the season also in on the tackle. Ron Argonauts defensively with Cornigal at left end, Mechtel at left tackle, still wagon at right tackle, Wells 53 at right end. Second and five Stampeders. Mims. Hikes his way all the way to the 14-yard line. Stopped by Gene Mack and the gain is 11. Well, the Argonauts were in a man-to-man situation here where it was the responsibility of the halfback, Chip Barrett, number 30, to pick up Mims. He goes up, but uh, look at that little fake that Mims threw on him there, just sort of uh, Barrett grabbing there. Mims up, picks up the first down. Now will be first and ten for the San Peters at the Toronto Argonaut 14-yard line. This is the deepest penetration of the game. The foot end, John Henderson, tried to cut back in. The ball went outside. Dick Thornton reached back, but of course it was nowhere near him. John Henderson has really added a lot of punch to that offense of theirs. Uh, everybody used to double up on number 76, Herm Harrison, but with Henderson in there, that sort of balances out the attack. I'd like to also point out that number 45, Basil Bark, the center, has a broken thumb on his right hand which uh, consequently might force an adjustment as far as taking that snap from center. He's not going to get it back quite as hard. Second down and 10 for the Stamps at the Toronto 14. And Herman Harrison has got it in the end zone for the touchdown. Herman Harrison, the all-time Calgary receiver, takes a 14-yard pass. Well, we were just talking about Herm Harrison. It was Larry Brame, number 52. You see there, he has to drop back into that hook zone. Herm Harrison, who was split out a little bit, just sort of snuck in behind him. Brame lost sight of the ball, and Jerry Keeling put it right on the money for the touchdown. That's how the Calgary Stampeders have drawn first blood. <laughs> Stampeders are everywhere. Larry Robinson. That's good. Score is Calgary 7, Toronto nothing in the 1971. Great Cup game continues in a moment. Jerry Keeling in that well-directed drive, 52 yards, used three rushing plays, three passing plays, picking up three first downs along the route, and so the Calgary Stampeders. With Herman Harrison catching a 14-yard pass, go ahead in the ball game 7 to nothing. And this predominantly Western crowd... Really whooping it up now as the Calgary Stampeders go on top. Larry Robinson on the kickoff. Ramey to McQuay. McQuay tried to put the move back to the inside, but he lost his footing, and Howard Starks, number 11, drove him out. 35-yard return on that 60-yard kickoff. Well, Leon McQuay, who uh, I think was very impressed with the Chenley Awards this uh, past week and has really changed his attitude, he came into this ball game wanting to win the car for his mother. <laughs> and uh, so when he gets that ball, watch out, because he's going to be going all out. 
Toronto first down at the Toronto 40. Way to the 44-yard line. The gain is four. It'll be second and six. Okay, Bob. The last Calgary drive, Dick Aldridge, the regular corner linebacker, was kicked in the shin. He's still limping on the sidelines, but he should be back into the football game, but they were forced into it. Okay, Bob, it is now second down and actually five and a half yards to go, almost five at the 45 for the Toronto Argonauts. Henderson, 72, split left, even wide to the right. Wiseman. Finally, Frank Andruski, the old Canadian defensive back, drives him out at the 52-yard line. And that's the thing Calgary Stampeders have been worried most about, was being able to contain Joe Theismann. He picks up 13. Well, I think that's the first first down that the Argonauts have picked up so far in this game, and Joe Theismann looked as if he was going to be trapped. Everybody dropped back into their zone, and uh, Theismann got loose. The only problem was that he picked on Frank Andrewski to try and get around of him, and Frank played off uh, the man trying to block him, number nine, Mike Eben, very well to hold uh, Joe Theismann to that game, of, which gave him a first down. So the Toronto Argonauts are first down at the Calgary 54. Play is stopped by Coins and the ball popped loose. Harris also hit him, but the whistle had blown, and that gain will be three yards at the Calgary Stampeder 51 yard line. Coach Leo Cahill is sending in some plays. He sends, he's been alternating Tony Morrow, number 11, and number 16, Dave Cranmer. Looking at the two veteran tackles out there, Nikolak and Kelly, Frank Johnson says uh, his one tackle is 60, is 37, 136. He's the only one that has to call them both sir. McQuay. McQuay is pulled down by Dick Suderman, number 67. The ball will be at the eight, at the 48 yard line and they'll be about four yards short of the first down. So he managed to pick up about one. Looks as if uh, in the meeting that uh, you were telling him about where Jim Duncan was meeting with Punch Imlach and he, they were talking and uh, Duncan said he was gonna have to go for four singles and then back check it. Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look like he'll have to worry about that now. Al Rankin, number 75 and uh, number 28, Jim Sillier, back to receive. And Sishin gets his best one up there. To Cillier at the three. Fumbles. And he's driven back into the end zone. I think he got out to the one-yard line, however, and saved a single point as Tony Morrow really hit him on that one and drove him back. But he was out to the one-yard line, and that goes as a 47-yard kick. Calgary Stampeders leading the Toronto Argonauts 7 to nothing. But the Big Z's been kicking uh, better in the latter half of the season than he was during the middle part and the early part of the season. He gets a, a big 47-yard kick on this play, and Tony Moore, who does a great job of getting down underneath those punts, made a real stunning tackle on it. And so Jerry Keeling, number 10, will have to work this one from behind his own goal line. This is McKinnis. And McKinnis is finally pulled down by Chip Barrett. Way out at the 25-yard line. His point, he probably went down at the 23. And that's a 22-yard gain. Lou McKinnis. He's carried the ball for 2,050 yards in two young years with the Calgary Stampeders. Gets 25, 22 big ones here. First down at the 24. Healing. And this is to McKinnis again, and he is driven out at the 31-yard line. And that gain is very close to seven yards as Tim Anderson, number 26, drove him out. And Jerry Keeling, Dick, is coming very, very close to getting hit, but that quick release of his is continuing to save him. 
Well, the main idea as far as quarterback's concerned, and we'll hear from uh, Russ Jackson in the second half on that, but really you got to wait till that last split second to release that ball. Let that man make the break on him and then hit it with him, and uh, uh, he's looking like he did in that last game against Saskatchewan, very sharp to this point. Second down, two and a half for Calgary Stampeders, just over their own 30. McKinnis, he was hit by Jim Stillwagon. He got to the 30, and so they're going to be forced to kick. Calgary Stampeders leading the Toronto Argonauts 7 to nothing, 352 remaining in the opening quarter of play. Leo Cahill, who has rebuilt the Toronto Argonauts, there are only five Argonauts there from the pre-Cahill days, five years ago. Jim Furlong, a 10-year veteran, kicking from the Calgary 17. Paquette. Paquette is down at the 40-yard line. Hit there by Brian Marshall, number 71. A graduate from Loyola. 41-yard kick and a two-yard return. John Atamian, who has played with Toronto, with Saskatchewan, Winnipeg briefly, and now with Calgary, was also in on the tackle. And the Toronto Argonauts will be first and 10 at the Toronto 40-yard line. Anderson and Cranmer left. McQuay, and McQuay was piled up in there by Fred James, number 47. And John Helton, number 77. Those two big defensive tackles. The gain is two yards. It'll be second down and eight to go. Number 61, Craig Coinzan at right end. Number 67, Dick Suderman at left end. The 77, Helton at left tackle. And James, 47 at right tackle. Gives Calgary one of the finest defensive lines in the league. And one of the biggest. Theismann. He was hit in there by Dave Crabb, and he was down at the 48-yard line. Gain of five yards on the play. The score is Calgary 7, Toronto nothing, and the 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. It'll be third down and two and a half yards to go for the Toronto Argonauts. And after eight, nine months of planning and preparation, uh, the thing that you fear most has just happened. A power line has failed for one of our major mobile units. So we're down to three cameras, but uh, hopefully they'll be restored shortly. And Musician gets a tremendously high kick to Cillier at the 20. And he's driven out at the 20-yard line. Down there is Joe Vijuk, number 59, and Tony Morrow, number 11. 42-yard kick. Like Joe Vijuk with his tremendous downfield tackling, Dick, is trying to make amends for having missed the flight out here. Well, Joe Vijuk's been very important in the last few games. He's played defense, both guard positions, uh, carried the water bucket, uh, done anything, run out for coffee. Whatever you want to do, he'll do it. Now the Calgary Stampeders are first and ten at the Calgary 20-yard line. Lenderman. And he is pulled down by Marv Luster. And there'll be a loss of a yard or two on that play. As Marv Luster, the 10-year veteran of the CFL, it ran the streak and got right to that quick Calgary halfback before he could get back to the line of scrimmage. Be second down and 11 to go for the Stampeders at the Calgary 19. Now they send Shaw and Harrison to the bottom of your screen. Mims. Mims is dropped at the 27 yard line. In there to get him was number 53, George Wells, and 52, Larry Brain. Eight-yard gain. That'll make it third down and two. And once more, the Toronto receivers, number 15, Aboff, 17, Pocket, come out to receive. We have one minute, 11 seconds remaining in the opening quarter of play. Pocket and Aboffs at the Toronto 45-yard line. 
Herlong. Paquette at the 50. Spins off number 54, John Forzani, but his forward point of advance was the 51-yard line. 33-yard kick and a two-yard return. There are a couple of ball players who certainly wish that they were in there. Certainly Ed Harrington and John Trainer and Bob Hamilton for the uh, Toronto Argonauts and Bill Van Berkeley for the Calgary Stampeders who have contributed so much to the, the team's play this season. Uh, because of injuries, they're not in the big game. Even goes wide to the right, Henderson wide to the left, Toronto first down at the Toronto 51-yard line. Four receivers now. Center screen to McQuay. There's a flag on the play. Flag, there are two flags down. As Joe Theismann finally trying to take some of that tremendous Calgary defensive heat off, comes back with that little center screen to McQuay. Now he had picked up 17 yards on the play to the 42. Well, certainly a flag in that position would indicate uh, clipping, uh, I would imagine, on the play. It was a center screen. What they did was split out the ends to uh, widen out the linebackers. Uh, Wayne Harris moved a little bit to uh, the right side to go over with Mel Prophet. This left it open in the middle, but one of the linemen uh, uh, in trying to clear Wayne Harris as he, as he came up to try and get in on the play uh, clipped him, and consequently the Argonauts were caught. Called him for um, interference on that one, Dick. Uh, which brings the ball to the 41-yard line, and it'll be first down over again with 20 yards to go. McQuay. Maintained his balance and finally goes down at the 44-yard line, picking up three. Larry Robinson made the tackle. And the score is Calgary 7, Toronto nothing. The 19th ball game. Calgary Stampeders leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Toronto Argonauts at their own 44-yard line. Second down and 17 yards to go. Heisman. This is long to profit, and he's got it. As Terry Wilson finally brings down Big Mel Prophet. 56 yards was the length of the game. Well, first, Mel Prophet's a big uh, favorite with the Toronto fans, and everybody wonders why he's never used. And uh, I was wondering if they were going to use him in this particular game, and I thought maybe they would be trying to hit him short. But uh, here they come up with a big pass to Mel Prophet that goes completely across the field. And Joe Theismann just gets the ball away to him, and he pulls it in. And by the way, Mel Prophet's parents came up from California to see him. The first time that they've ever seen him play professional football. Toronto Argonauts are first and ten at the Calgary 11-yard line. Thornton is in in place of Eden. The pass to Prophet was too high. Back there to cover was Howard Starks, number 11, and Frank Andruski, number 24. Even now goes back in and Thornton comes out. Oh, I can not send offensively with Prophet and Henderson as the end. Way. Even wide to the right. Simons and Morrow. Tips away. Intended for number 24, Leon McQuay. Henderson was right there with him. And Larry Robinson. Wayne Harris. Harris, who won the Outstanding Lyman Award for the fourth time in his 11-year career. Otto Argonauts and that 56-yard pass were able to pick up more yards on the one pass and their uh, offensive output in the first quarter. Joe Theismann will hold, and Ivan McMillan will attempt the three points. He was good on 12 out of 20 this season. That's good. 
Little Ivan McMillan, the smallest man in the CFL. Scores Calgary 7 and Toronto 3. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. And so with that field goal by Ivan McMillan, the Toronto Argonauts get on the scoreboard. Calgary leads 7-3. to three. There's the longest one ever in the Grey Cup. And the Calgary Stampeders with Harrison, Linderman, and Jerry Shaw all split left. Their first down at their own 35. Over the head of Linderman. Martin, who came in there, gave him a pretty good rush with those hands up high, forced him to throw it high, and as a result, he put it over the head of Rudy Linderman. He's been good on three out of six passes for 50 yards so far in the ball game. Second down, 10 to go for the Stampeders at their own 35. That's intercepted by Tim Anderson. Number 26 stepping in front of Herman Harrison. And Jim Duncan of the Calgary Stampeders is claiming interference down there by Anderson as he bumped Harrison as he turned in front of him. Well, it's just a great job of uh, defensive play by Tim Anderson here as he is beaten on the play and Jerry Keeling knows he's got him turned around. You notice here that Anderson's going one way, he's lost sight of the ball, but when he turns around to go the other way, he's able to pick the ball off for the interception. Toronto first down at the Toronto 46 yard line. McQuay got it. That should be 12 yards and a first down for Leon McQuay, who was hit by the bench. for a gain of 12 yards and the Toronto Argonauts will take the ball at the 51 that is the Calgary 51 yard line Harry Aboff's number 15 goes into the ball game to replace McQuaid Aboff number 15 and Simon's 33 the setback the ball is fumbled and let's see who's got it Calgary Stampeders have got the ball Eisman started to move back. He didn't have a hold of it. I think all the Argonauts lost sight of the ball completely, and I believe Joe Eisman was driven back so that he couldn't really go back to it. And I believe it was number 21, Dave Crabb, was the fellow that uh, ended up for it for the Calgary Stampeders. You notice that Joe Eisman is scrambling around there trying to find it. He couldn't find it. Calgary comes up with it. Peters first down at the Calgary 52-yard line. Linderman. Linderman is at the 49-yard line for a gain of uh, very close to nine, hit by Tim Anderson and Barrett. Knocked his helmet loose, but he held on to the football. Linderman runs that counter so well, and he's broken those for big gainers. Second down and one yard to go for the Calgary Stampeders. <laughs> Hitting fumbles the football out and that handoff to McKinnis, but he might have pulled it back in. There's the indication by Basil Bark that he feels that the Stampeders pulled the ball back in. Ten minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the first half. Calgary leading 7-3. to three, And they have the first down. Gene Mack has just protested to the referee Harry Ross about the holding of Lanny Valeski. And 
Liggins at right guard, Valeski at right tackle. Liggins originally started, of course, as the outstanding defensive line, and now he says he loves it offensively. First down, Stampeders at the 48. Mims, and Mims is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And that was Jim Stillwagon with Dave Nechtel in there to help him out. Calgary Stampeders trying to make amends for the 23-10 breakup loss to Montreal last year. Wing. Here's Bob Moyer at the bench. John Leon McQuay said that when he hit that bench, he hit his head and his hand. His hand stings and his head hurts a little bit, but he's okay. He'll play all the rest of the way. Okay, Bob. Keely. Intended for Linderman too far. And so the Calgary Stampeders, after having recovered the fumble, have been unable to move deeper than the Toronto 47-yard line. It is now third down and ten. Dick, I thought that the players said the throwing of the football wouldn't be much of a problem, uh, but it seems to me that it has affected this game more than that. Well, when we were out to practice the other day, they were throwing wet balls. Joe Theismann was saying, I think that they're trying to strengthen my arm because I can hardly, I have to shut with the ball. But uh, they're trying to keep the ball as dry as possible. But with this uh, moisture in the air, it does affect it. Furlong, that's his best one up there. That's Harry A. Box at the two. A. Box moves to the five, then the six, and he is done. Al Rankin, number 75, who was with Saskatchewan for two years before joining the Calgary Stampeders, made the stop. And that's a four-yard return on a 45-yard kick. Winning player on, at least the each player on the winning side receives $2,000 today, and the losing player, each player on the losing side, uh, picks up $1,500. Now the Argonauts are first down at their own six. Is to Simons. Theismann. There's a flag on the play, and Theismann is dropped at the 15 yard line, very close to a first down. Well, the official gave a preliminary signal of holding against the defensive club, the Calgary Stan Peters. Harris was the party detected on the holding call, and so the Toronto Argonauts will take the ball first and ten at the Toronto 16-yard line. 9-14 left in the first half of the 60th Grey Cup Classic. McQuay. And McQuay moves close to the 20-yard line, picking up four. They haven't gone to Bill Simon since the first play of the game, which is somewhat surprising, Dick. They must be, well, they must have the feeling they have to get outside and have to get there quick. Well, I think the idea is that uh, Bill Simons does such a great job of blocking that they're using more of the blocker, and I think that possibly they might be thinking that Wayne Harris is keying on him, but uh, certainly he's a guy that you've got to go to. He's got to get that ball to be effective. Second and six. Auto. Five minutes nailed once again. Fred James, John Helton, and uh, Joe Forzani. They drop him for a loss of 10. Well, we saw John Helton earlier in the year, and uh, he wasn't having the best of time because he had a uh, bad leg, but certainly on this particular play, he came in there and made things awful tough for Joe Thijs. That's the third time Theismann has been dropped today, and the loss was uh, 31 yards. Total of 31 yards in those three. That shows you the tremendous caliber of that Calgary front four. And uh, decision will kick from five yards deep in his own goal line. Now Rankin back for it. Rankin is dropped at the 50-yard line. Get in there by Joe Vijuk. That's a 50-yard kick and a nine-yard return. And Frank Andruski almost blocked that one. 
Calgary Stampeders, the last team to go undefeated in the CFL. With a 12-0 record in 1948. Try to win their second breakup championship. Stampeders are first down at the Toronto 51. Healing. Get out there to number 20, John Henderson. Scores Calgary 7, Toronto 3. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. And win, lose, or draw for the Calgary Stampeders. It's the big reception at the Stampede Corral at noon tomorrow. Calgary Stampeders right now are second down and four yards to go at the Toronto 44. Healing. And he's all the way to the six-yard line. The ball popped loose, and I think the Calgary Stampeders have lost it. That was a 39-yard gain. Well, as the officials are still trying to decide who's got the ball, you notice here that uh, Dave Rain is watching his man. But really what happened was Tim Anderson fell as he was trying to cover Rudy Litterman, and then Dave Ramey, as he tried to recover, was uh, beaked out, and Rudy Litterman took it down to the five-yard line. And it looks like the Calgary is going to maintain possession of the ball. It slipped right through the Calgary hands. The Toronto player had it, and he obviously must have lost it again. And the Calgary Stampeders did get the ball back at the five-yard line, so it will be first and goal to go. minutes and nine seconds left in the first half and the Stampeders are knocking at the door. Another 39 yarder. A tennis is driven back by Jim Cargill, number 66. He lose about a half a yard on the play so it'll be second and goal to go from the it's right on the six-yard line now. They were just over it previously. Calgary knocking at the door. Healing to Mims. And Mims is in there for the touchdown. Jesse Mims. Jared Gain and the third rushing touchdown for Jesse Mims this year. Well, we've got Hugh McGinnis going one way, and it looked like a delayed trap up the middle. You see Jesse Mims just delay in there, and then the linemen were occupied, and then he just found that little opening up the middle. He took it in for the sixth point. And so the Stampeders go on top 13-3. to three. Larry Robinson, second highest scorer in Canadian Football League history, ties the extra point. That's good. And with six minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the second quarter, the Calgary Stampeders are really whooping it up now. And the football reporters are probably decided to make notes because they have two big awards. The outstanding player of the game will receive a 1972 Le Mans convertible. And the outstanding Canadian player in the game will receive two tickets anywhere in the world in the CPR system. So the players have two special awards as well as, of course, the Grey Cup itself. Tony Morrow! And the ball goes out. He was the last man to touch it. Goes out at the 38. I noticed Greg Barton warming up down on the sidelines. He's taken off his jacket and starting to throw uh, to Dick Aldridge. So it looks like that we might get a chance to see Greg Barton get uh, a little action. Here. Eisman goes back in. There he is, number seven. 
make two All-American teams last year, set seven offensive records at Notre Dame, but he's never met a defensive line like he's needing this afternoon. Simon. Simon just gets over the line of scrimmage, stopped by Craig Coinsan and picks up one. The Toronto Argonaut, 39 yard line. Dick Thornton goes in with a play from the bench. Toronto is the only uh, club in the Eastern Conference has been able to maintain any uh, superiority over Calgary. That is in games won and lost ever since the introduction of the interlocking schedule back in 1961. And Toronto has won six of the 11 games. Martin wide to the right. Second and nine. Heisman, the profit, to the 51-yard line, and that's good for 14 yards. Stopped in there by Dave Crabb, number 21. Well, as you notice, Mel Profit going back, he's sort of uh, ducking his shoulder. He's got a bad left shoulder that he suffered in uh, practice, so consequently this might be why they haven't been using him. But they had success against Calgary before with uh, Mel and this short out stuff. And uh, here, the backs cleared everything out, and Mel just took it down about 10 yards and was wide open. You'll probably see that play many times. Toronto first down at the Toronto 51. Even. Mike Even. And Even is down to the 44-yard line. Stopped again by Dave Crabb. Even an all-star flanker in the West last year, an all-star flanker in the East this year, picks up 15 yards. his first one of the afternoon. We have four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the half. Mims and Harrison scoring the majors for the Calgary Stampeders. McMillan, the field goal for Toronto. First down, Toronto at the Calgary 44. Simon. To about the 41 yard line, hit by Wayne Harris. Harris must have a magnet in him because wherever he goes, that ball is. I tell you, he reads so well and he, he knows all the keys and uh, who's in the backfield, where they are, what down the situation is. He's just uh, uncanny in the way he plays it. And incidentally, I found out from one of the Calgary writers just before coming up to the broadcast booth. That uh, Wayne Harris has said that next year will be his last year. That'll be his 12th season. And uh, what a loss that would be to anybody. Second down and uh, seven yards to go for the Argonauts at the 41. The ball is loose. Ellison Kelly kicks it. And it's recovered away down at the 28-yard line. Ellison Kelly kicked the football. I don't think he intended to. The original line of scrimmage was the Calgary Stampeder 41-yard line. The ball is back at the 29-yard line. And well, the certainly loss of 40. Well, if he was going to kick it, he's kicking it the wrong way because normally that's what you want to do is kick it towards your goal line. But uh, here Joe Theismann, of course, trying to hold on to that football out there with that kind of rush and the uh, weather conditions the way they are, the ball naturally is a little looser and uh, or at least it was knocked away from him. And then, uh, of course, everybody's scrambling ground. Fred James tried to pick up the ball and take it in for a score and he would have certainly had a good chance at it. Uh, if he had done that, but uh, consequently it looks like Kelly gets the ball and the Argonauts have it. And because uh, tr Toronto kicked it, it'll be third down. Had Calgary kicked the ball when it was loose, it would have been Toronto first down. So it'll be third down and 50 yards to go. And decision back at his own 16-yard line. Jim Sillier. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah. 
Andrew Sitchin, the corner, was uh, hit back there. Now, there's another flag away in front of the Calgary bench. They're dropping all over the place. Now, that was third down and 50, but Andrew Sitchin, the punter, was hit. Since uh, the kicker is hit on this play, it makes it an automatic first down. Uh, the roughing is called at that point. What happened upfield was that Calgary uh, caught the ball, and there was roughing as they drove him right out of bounds over the bench and onto the track. But uh, that's not the one that's going to count. It's the uh, first one that's going to count, the roughing on the kicker. I'm sorry, it is going to be third down over again. That'll bring the ball up to the... Well, it was at the 29. Let's just double-check this one. I thought yeah. I was right. Yeah, it should be... Got to be an first. automatic first down. That'll give the Toronto Argonauts the ball at the 29-yard line, and it is first down back there. And as Jim Duncan, <laughs> as coaches are really steaming over there. The score is Calgary 14, Toronto 3, and the 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. Up in the Royal Box, His Excellency, the Governor General, with the Commissioner Jake Adar, and the Royal Party enjoying this afternoon's football game as Calgary leads Toronto 14 to 3. Well, now the roughing the kicker call, giving the automatic first down, takes the ball to the 15 yard line, and it'll be first down. And 10 at that point. Oh, we're all straightened out and ready to go again. Eisman looking out here to McQuay. And McQuay fights his way to the 25 yard line, and that should be enough to move the yardsticks. isolated cameras were watching Leon McQuay on this particular play and uh, see how he is moving uh, once he catches that football. You see there he notices a little room to the inside and he's got that uh, great speed and maneuverability just trying to find that opening to take it all away. There you are. Now you see it again just from the isolated camera. You see he's looking to the inside, finding that room. A lot of tacklers there. Craig Coinsan, number 61, finally brought him down. It is first down at the Toronto 25-yard line. Heisman. He goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line, driven up there by Frank Andruski. Goes Heisman. call and Joe Vija. Fred James on the play so that that'll take the ball back to the Toronto 13 yard line. So they'll have the first down over again but now they have 12, 22 and a half yards to go. First and 22 for Toronto. So they have Faced with some very long yardage situations so far in the ball game. Even all the way to the 37 yard line, and there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage again. Looks like Dick Suderman uh, came in with a little extra effort there on the quarterback, Joe Theismann. There'll be roughing calls. There's the indication, rough play against the Calgary Stampede. That'll take the ball all the way to the 54-yard line. Well, the Argonaut offensive line is just having a tough time keeping everybody out of that backfield, and Joe seems to have to rush over them, but he gets time enough here as Mike Evans gets away from Dave Crabb on this play, and he digs it out as a second baseman would and uh, slides into home plate with a big completion. 
Raganoff at the 54. Weisman has to break out of the air. Gets away from Suderman. And is finally pulled down at the 43-yard line. Joe Theismann stopped by Reggie Holmes, number 27. And he had a minute and 50 seconds left in the first half of the ball game. Well, it looks as this, this is what Joe Theismann is going to have to be doing more of, is trying to just uh, let the blind man block to the outside and then take it up the middle, pick up what yardage you can. That'll slow that line rush down, and then that'll enable everything else to uh, possibly open up for it. Well, now we have Greg Barton coming into the ball game. For the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, Seisman was hit back there, and uh, he's uh, hit in the head. He's just a little bit woozy right now. They give him the smelling salts at the Toronto bench. Barton, the quarterback, number 18. Joe Simon. After the ball had been touched by number 27, Reg Holmes, Simon's got a hand on it but couldn't hold on. That'll make it second down and 10 to go. 25-year-old Greg Barton, who under Coach Glenn Dobbs at Tulsa, established some phenomenal passing records, had a lifetime record of 65%, but he comes in with some stick on his hands and a chance to throw that ball if hands are dry. Toronto sends even wide to the right. Even. And lose some yardage there. He's back at the 41-yard line. Uh, he was within two or three yards of the first down before he tried to shake off those Calgary tacklers. But uh, Calgary has always got three or more people right in this spot. Well, I think you're right, John. I think uh, Mike even could have picked up the first down on that play because uh, Frank Andruski, who was playing him uh, man for man on the play, he beat beaten him short. You notice here, he tries to get uh, Andruski to go to the outside, which he does do. He breaks loose for him, but uh, I guess all ball carriers want to try and get the touchdown on every play. There you see that uh, he knows that he's free. Rather than go back and just settle for trying to get that first down, he sacrificed. McMillan from the 47-yard line. Short lands on the one-yard line. Stark has it. Stark is hit at the two and dropped. And, and with 53 seconds left to go in the half, here's Bob. Johnny, Joe Theismann had to come out of the game when he was wrapped on the head, not because he was hurting so much, but because the wrap on the head brought tears to his eyes, and he couldn't see what he was doing. That put Greg Barton in the game. Okay, Bob. Well, the Calgary Stampeders with a 14-3 lead are at their own two-yard line. Liggins and Atamian are the guards. Husky and Shum the tackle. Mims hit by Stillwagon and slid off Stillwagon to move to the five-yard line for a gain of three. Well, of course, Andy Brothers out there playing such a part for the Calgary Stampeders. In two years, the Calgary Stampeders will have the third of the Farzani Brothers who is setting all kinds of records at Utah. Second down and the seven for the Stamps at their own five. McKinnis hit by Brain, slid off Brain and went to the 10-yard line, and so he'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. 13 seconds left. third down and two so with 13 seconds left to go Toronto has not sent any receivers back they feel that Calgary might try to run it out and kill the clock here rather than give Toronto a chance to get it now Barrett starts to drop back just in case the clock is going 
And he just dives with the ball to Kilowatt. And so the first half ends. And at the end of the first half, the score is Calgary 14, Toronto 3. We'll return with our Grey Cup halftime show in just a moment. And two fellows who are very anxious to partake of the next 30 minutes of action are sitting up with us here in the booth. And I refer to Don Chevrier and Russ Jackson. Take it away, fellas. Thank you, Pat. Hello again, everybody. The second half about to start. In about 30 minutes of playing time from now, barring overtime, we will know which team will be Canada's pro football champions of 1971. You know the score is 14 to 3, and here's how the teams compare. In the first two quarters of play here at Empire Stadium this afternoon, as Toronto was able to get ahead of Calgary in total yardage after the Stampeders had more than doubled the total yardage output on Calgary or on Toronto in the opening quarter. The top rusher again, Joel Theismann, with 47 yards. The leading receiver, Mel Prophet, 67 on one long reception. In Theismann's case, not a case of wanting to run Russ Jackson, a case of, in many opportunities, having to run with the ball. Certainly, Don, the Calgary defense has put on great pressure on Joe Theismann throughout that first half. And as we mentioned during the highlights, we would hope that the Toronto Argonauts can prevent this rush because Joe Theismann has been dancing around back there. He is the leading ground gainer for the Toronto Argonauts in this particular ball game. And even the passes that he did complete, the long one to Mel Prophet and the one to Mike Even coming out of his own end zone there about the two-yard line, were after he had been forced out of that pocket. And Jerry Keeling, in contrast, having an abundance of time on many plays for the Calgary Stampeders. You see number 19, Zenon Andrews Zishin with the ball in the tee, getting set to kick to 31. Hugh McInnes of 19, Jesse Mann. 14 to 3, Calgary is the score as Andrew Zishin meets the ball for the second half kickoff. Spins to Rankin and Rankin across the 40 yard line for the Calgary Stampeders to start play here in the third quarter. It was Gene Mack, number 76, who met him with the tackle. 30 yards, the length of the kickoff by Zenon Andrews Zishin. Jim Duncan, the coach of the Calgary Stampeders, back for the third time in four years, looking for that national championship and, of course, the Grey Cup. With Keeling at quarterback, Stampeders at first down. Jesse Mim, slowed by Mack, stopped by Ramey. 46-yard line, the gain is five. It'll be second and five to come for the Cowboys. Don Marv Lester, number 27 for the Argonauts, the free safety back there, and probably the key in that secondary for the Toronto Argonauts, has had a good afternoon. He came in there and was unhappy with himself when he did not stop Jesse Mims right at the line of scrimmage. Number 72 is Shaw. He breaks left. Marv Lester, of course, the deep safety man for the Toronto Argonauts. Henderson set right. Healing. Had to recover back at the 42-yard line. That's approximately the original line of scrimmage in Jim Steelwagon, number 68, was there on behalf of Toronto. He lost the ball momentarily, got it back. It'll now be third and nine as you see Tim Anderson leave the field. 14 to three, early in the third quarter here. Calgary leading Toronto as Jim Furlong sets to punt back at the Stampeder 30. Marker has been thrown. Harry Aboff at the 30-yard line, run down by Brian Marshall. But I repeat, there was a penalty marker thrown as that kick got underway. Punt traveled 43 yards. The return was five by Aboff. And he, along with punt return men on both teams, having trouble fielding the ball, which takes some weird bounces here on this wet artificial turf. The indication is that Jim Stillwagon was offside uh, for the Toronto Argonauts on that last play. And the option belongs to the Calgary Stampeders for the Argonauts to accept the ball there or for Calgary to repeat the punt. And the Stampeders have chosen to kick over again. Don, quite a few punts this afternoon have been of the low variety. And when they do bounce on that turf, you mentioned they do take some funny bounces. And certainly not only that, but these punt return men have to field that ball when it is not completely dry. But it was an offside against the Toronto Argonauts, and it's third down over again for the Calgary Stampeders. 
It leaves them still a good four yards away from their first down. Objective at the 46-yard line. John Henderson next to head coach Jim Duncan. As Frank Andruski joins the conversation at the Stan Peter bench. I'm wondering whether he wanted them to take that punt and let the Toronto Argonauts have that ball. Well, Furlong is hoping for a better kick right now. Avos and Paquette wait the kick. It is short to the sideline and goes out of bounds. The marking will be at the 42-yard line of the Toronto Argonauts. So the Argonauts actually benefit by the Stampeders' decision to return the kick or repeat it. 22 yards was all for Jim Furlong that time. Off the side of his foot and out of bounds. And Joe Theismann, who was shaken up late in the second quarter, replaced briefly by Greg Barton. You see number seven is back to quarterback in the third quarter here. And there's no catch at the 50-yard line. Trying for the interception was Larry Robinson. And Mel Prophet, number 75, had been the target of Joe Theismann's pass. It'll be second and ten. John, has happened in that first half. That Calgary defensive line is putting that pressure on, and Joe Theismann again was decked by Big John Helton, number 77. They just don't seem to be able to keep that front four for the Stampeders out of there, and they've hardly blitzed it all this afternoon. You know immediately when you come out over that ball that it's basically a four-man rush. Occasionally, they might bring on one of the strong side corners if you roll toward them. It is second and ten, 42-yard line. Theismann. Away from Suderman. Man pursued and caught by Dick Suderman at the 48-yard line, but the Argonauts will not have the first down. And that's an example, Russ, of uh, Joe Feisman simply having to run. Well, that pressure is there. It's going to come all the time, and he's just going to have to try and get a little more protection, and it's going to be up to that front line of the Toronto Argonauts to give him some more protection. And the gain was six yards for Joe Feisman. Joe Theismann here on this last play going back, and it's a rollout, and John Helton took the inside track. Two men missed him, and as he rolled out here, Suderman gave pursuit to him and pulled him down. This is Andrew Zishin with a good rush and the kick away. Celia lost the ball. Toronto Argonauts have it. Lateral to Roger Scales. There's nobody between Scales and the goal line. Toronto touchdown. Joe Vijak flipping it out to Roger Scales. The Toronto punter not getting one of his better kicks away, and Celia, who was showing him some respect, tried to make that catch on the run, couldn't handle that ball, and as he dropped it, the Toronto player picked it up and with very alert knowledge out there when he was tackled by Rankin number 75, pitched it out to Scales, and Scales ran it 27 yards for the touchdown. That's a lineman's dream, and to happen in a great cup run is something he'll never forget. He certainly will not, nor will Argonaut fans who have their team within five points. It can be four if Ivan McMillan can convert this touchdown. There's the dance by McMillan. You know it's true. And so the score is Calgary 14 and Toronto 10. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. The last Argonaut Grey Cup score by an end, Zeke O'Connor. This one by a lineman, Roger Scale. And the kickoff bounding down the 25-yard line. Dave Crabb for Calgary. And Graham got a piece of them, along with Cranmer across the 40-yard line. And the Stampeders will go from between the 41 and the 42 on a 16-yard return. At the Toronto bench, here is Bob Moore. Don, I was just talking to the happy Roger Scales. He can hardly keep himself on the ground. That's the first time, not only of a fumble recovery that he ran with it, but certainly his first touchdown ever in football. And as Russ said, he picked a great spot, the Grey Cup game. Jerry Keeling looking for Henderson. Got it. No catch, he dropped the ball at the 31-yard line. It came loose, Russ, just as he came down. John Henderson, number 20, went downfield. He ran a post pattern, and the Toronto Argonauts in his own defense, and Marv Lester, who is in the middle of that zone, didn't get back quite deep enough and had his back turned when the ball was thrown. 
Henderson went around Luster. Thought he had the ball, but dropped it as he went down. So it is now second and ten. The Calgary Stampeders just across the 41-yard line, leading by four, 14 to 10. Henderson left. Saw and Harrison go right. Jesse Mims. At the 44-yard line, Mims has three. The Stampeders will be third and seven. George Wells, number 53, was the tackler for the Toronto Argonauts. One of the many outstanding newcomers that has helped the Argonauts win the Eastern Championship and enter this breakup game in 1971. Mims, for Calgary, their most promising newcomer of 1971 on the offensive backfield. Harry Abob got the ball back after losing it at the 28-yard line. And it is slippery and very hard to control. 38 yards was the length of the kick. Jim Furlong, the Calgary punter and sometimes outside linebacker, punting this ball to Harry Aboff. And Aboff, he's backing up underneath it, just seemed to take his eye off that ball, lost it. Unfortunately for him, he pulled it back in before the Calgary offense was down there to recover that fumble. First down, Toronto, 28 yard line. Bill Simon. That'll be two for number 33 to the 30-yard line. And that's by Dave Crabb, number 21 for Calgary. And Crabb limping ever so slightly, as you see. Number 21, Dave Crabb, is playing the strong side linebacker for the Calgary Stampeders this afternoon. He is flip-flopping in there with Porzani, number 73. And he will always take the side that Mel Proffitt, the tight end for the Toronto Argonauts tournament. Three receivers downfield for Fiesman, but he can't get to them. His great point fan has Joe Fiesman for a sizable loss. Number 61, Craig Coinsman. One of the people who make that Calgary front attack go on defense. The loss is 12. Don, this is when it becomes a very frustrating afternoon for a quarterback such as Joe Theismann, wondering what is happening to that protection because on almost every play that he goes back to pass, I'm sure he's now thinking in the back of his mind, am I going to get time to throw it? And resistance will be kicking on third and ten. The Cedars near center field for the Stan Peters, City of five yards ahead of Rankin. Another high and resistant kick. Rankin to Celia, 51-yard line. Jim Celia, slowed by Joe Vijak and contained by Desjardins. 46 yards, the length of and resistant's kick. And he certainly has given the Argonauts one edge this afternoon, and that is in the punting department. 9.29 on the third quarter clock at Empire Stadium. It's Calgary 14, Toronto 10. Scales, touchdown. Of a fumble recovery, the only scoring play of the second half. Jerry Keeling. Hugh McKinnis, after the fake to Jesse Mims, and the yardage will be about three. Larry Brame, number 52, made the tackle along with Jim Stillwagon. And the Argonauts, Ross appear to have found a strong middle linebacker in Larry Brame. The last two ball games of the season, John, he came on for the Argos and has played. Real outstanding football, and the guy number 77, Peter Martin, who was replaced by Larry Brain, was probably thinking all week, I wonder how much I'm going to play in this great cup game after playing with the Argus for so many years. And unfortunately for Dick Aldridge, number 31, the right corner linebacker, he got hurt early in the ball game, and Peter Martin has been in there ever since. Dan Peters, second down. Dick Thornton coming very close to picking off that Jerry Keeling pass. It is incomplete. It will be third down and eight. Stan Peters. But as you know, Dick is always an opportunist with the ball in the air. Well, the Toronto Argonauts taking a leaf out of the Calgary Stan Peter book there and putting a good rush on Jerry Keeling as he tried to roll to the left. And when he laid that ball up there, Dick Thornton dropping off in that zone almost had that interception. And he had quite a few of them, man, having only played about half the season on defense this year, Don. 
And Greg Barton behind Mel Profit warming up in case his services are required here in the second half. He played briefly in the second quarter, as you know. Jim Furlong, again, a wobbler off to the side. A good bounce. And at the 19-yard line, it hops into touch. We now have eight minutes and nine seconds left in the third quarter. The kick traveled 38 yards with the bounce. Calgary leads 14-10. Back to Bob Moyer. Don, Don Rusk was mentioning Dick Aldridge. There's no way that Dick's going to go back into the game, evidently, because they tried to help him at halftime. But that kick on the shin that he received is just too painful, and they couldn't help him up. And he's standing on the sidelines, but he won't get back in. Toronto first down. Leon McQuay. And Leon slides to the first down marker, but of course he'll be ruled back at the 27-yard line, two yards away. The game was eight. McQuay always explosive and dangerous whenever he takes the ball. They're trying to work him inside. It seems to be they're relieving him a little more now, trying to break him around the outside to use that speed even on this wet field. Cranmer, 16, coming out for Toronto. Be second down and about a yard and a half. Even right, Henderson left. McQuay flares to the slot. Fake to Simon. No thighs run for Reich even. It is no good with Frank Andruski, number 24, defending. And it runs the third down for Toronto. Don Joe Theismann on that particular play went to a play pass action. A good call, I would believe, on a second and about two or three yards. They're probably looking for that running play to get that first down. And he went down, faked off tackle, dropped back, and tried to hit Mike Eden coming over the middle. It's the kind of play that works. They uh, think you're a hero. If it doesn't, they start second-guessing you. So on third down now, Andrew Zitzman is the punter. Chops it high, very high once again. Rankin, Morrow, with Bray on the tackles for Toronto, the 42-yard line. 40 yards, the length of Andrew Zishin's kick. Calgary leads this breakup game 14 to 10. 6.37 to play in quarter three. And the outstanding player of this game will soon be known. You see some previous winners. Who was that in 1969? Can you make that up? Oh, friend of mine, Dan. That was the great cup between Ottawa and Saskatchewan, of course. Won 29-14 by the Ottawa Rough Riders in Montreal. Rudy Letterman has come today. Marvin Luster at the 35-yard line. Read it beautifully. Loss is going to be eight yards on the play. The score is Calgary 14, Toronto 10. And the 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. With Russ Jackson, this is on Chevrolet at Empire Stadium. Late in the third quarter of the Grey Cup game, 14 to 10, Calgary leading. And the Stampeders will be scrimmaging second down and 18 to go from the 35-yard line, their own. As Jim Duncan has seen his team's huge lead at halftime, seemingly huge, 11 points, dwindle down to only four. Hugh McKinnon. Just back a long way, but he'll have a gain across the 40-yard line. The Calgary Stampeders still well short of the first down, though. Gene Mack doing most of that shoving for Toronto. John, that fumble recovery by George Wells, who pitched it out to Scales, who went in for the touchdown of 27 yards, seems to have brought this Toronto defensive team especially to life. They have held that Calgary offense in check since that big turnover. And the defense with the only touchdown, Toronto's offensive 12, is yet to score in this game. Jim Furlong's kick is to Paquette at the 30 yard line of Toronto. Dave Crabb has a color on it and brings him down at the 25, so he'll lose five on the play. The kick traveled 41 yards by Jim Furlong. Here's a report now from the Calgary bench with Ken Newen. Well, for the Calgary Stampeder football club has never been better, Don. Thus far, only Dave Crabb, who you saw make that, 
tackle a few moments ago at a cramp in his leg, but he's back in there and apparently all right. Oh, it is first down, 26 yard line, Toronto. Bill Simon. He's trying to play it back to Feisman, but he had no chance to do so. And Crab, 21, has been injured again for the Calgary Stampeders. John, that's that throwback pass that comes back from Winnipeg with Kenny Plain and Jim Van Pelt from many, many years ago. And a lot of clubs have tried to use it since that first episode with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But uh, Craig Coynson, number 61, more or less smelled that play out. And he was running almost stride for stride with Joe Theismann and Ellison Kelly. Number 65, the offensive tackle for the Toronto Argonauts, was trying to get out there to get Craig Coynson if Joe Theismann could catch that pass. Those huge Calgary linemen were so close to uh, Theismann in pursuit, he couldn't even see the ball coming. Would have done him much good, had he, because he was not clear to catch it. And they attend to Crab at the 15-yard line. The Calgary Stampede training staff does. 14-10 to 10 is the score. Toronto in arrears by four to the Calgary Stampeders, the Western champions, as Crab is up. They have had seven fumbles in this game. record for one team is six. And that's, of course, understandable. We have so many today in view of that very soggy artificial turf. All right, second down and ten. Joe Feisman. Looking for Thornton. It's a catch and a first down at the 40-yard line. 15-yard game. Now, Joe Theismann came out of the huddle there and came up on that quick count, and he almost drew Fred James offside. He actually slipped and then crawled back to get into position, and then they got a pretty good rush on Joe Theismann, and he had to throw that ball again. He watched as he threw this completion to Dick Thornton. He was really hit by that defensive front four of the Stampeders again. And a fine catch by number 25, Thornton. That, by the way, is the first first down for either team, and this is the third quarter. We have played almost 11 minutes. Eisman looking deep for Jim Henderson. He has him at the Calgary 26 yard line. The ball came free. The whistle had sounded. Toronto remains in possession. The gain is 42 yards. Eisman to Jim Henderson. From our end zone camera, Jim Henderson just ran straight down the sideline, and Reggie Holmes had his back turned. And when he turned to try and find out where the ball was, Jim Henderson showing some real poise there, moved in front of him to make the reception for a long game. The Argonauts have Morrow, number 11 in. Cranmer comes out to the Toronto bench. It is first down, the 27-yard line of Calgary. Clay and Simons in the eye formation, and Bill Simons, the lead runner through, carries across the 25 for a gain of three. Jim Bond stopped in for Calgary. On one of the few times the Toronto Argonauts have actually run out of that eye formation. They have come up and lined off on it, but they have not run out of it. Yeah. Here's Ken Newen. Dave Crabb, number 21, we we're just talking about a moment ago, took a wrap on the knee. The kneecap is black and blue, a lot of pain, but he says it's going to be all right. Time will tell. Second down and seven, 24 yard line. Heisman over the center. It is incomplete at the 15-yard line. Tony Morrow had been the intended pass receiver. And now Ivan McMillan, number 12, comes on with the Toronto field goal team. Rudy Letterman there getting some repairs at the Calgary bench, number 17. Just over three minutes to play in this third quarter. 14 to 10. McMillan here attempting to make it 14 to 13. The attempt will come with Theismann holding from the 31-yard line. Angle left. And he claims he has it. The officials say no. And out, out of the track goes Robinson. It will be a single point. And Ivan McMillan is more than just a little upset. He likes to call his own, you know, Russ. Well, this time he was wrong. Dance. 
The score is Calgary 14 and Toronto 11. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. Jim Stillwagon again is always fast. This time he was too fast getting in to break up that play as it's whistled down. John, he didn't even give number 45 Basil Bark enough time to center that ball to Keeling before he came across that time. Now, he might be fast, but I don't think he's quite that fast. Well, he thought he heard the right number or something. That's always good to see, though, Don. A coach doesn't mind those too often because he knows that means that defensive line is ready when they're coming on like that and taking a few offside penalties. Agadats have been penalized four times for 42 yards. This one is worth five, and near the 30-yard line, it's first and five, Calgary. Shaw, 45 yards. First down, caught by number 14, Dave Ramey, after the completion from Jerry Keeling. From our ground level camera, the Toronto Argonauts, we won't see them, are jumping around in that defense. And as Shaw came downfield, Dave Ramey seemed to get well off him. He ran an out pattern, and the ball was not thrown that well to Jerry Shaw, number 72. But he does get that first down, and that's the first one for the Stampeders in some time. Jim Steelwagon gave Keeling quite a shot as he let the ball go. 15-yard gain, first down. Jesse Mim, contained by Steelwagon, getting some help from Corrigal at the 47-yard line. It'll be worth about two to the Calgary team. Stampeders who led 14-3 at halftime, now with a minute and 20 seconds, and the clock moving in the third quarter, have a lead of 14-11. to 11. John George Wells just gave Jesse Mims his chin strap back, and I can remember Jesse Mims in Toronto when they were in there to play the Toronto Argonauts saying that he and George went to school together at New Mexico State. He'd like to meet him on the street, but not on the football field. Well, they had him at old school, buddies. Who knows? George might not have given it back. There's Jerry Keeling's work for the air today. Close to 50%. Pass the letter not is gold incomplete. The official as the Argonauts Peter Martin continues downfield has whistled it dead as an incomplete pass. That several very, very close calls of that nature today. Early in the game, Keeling, did he release the ball or was it a fumble? They ruled it was a pass that was incomplete. This time, catch or no catch, they say no completion. Don, I've been there as a player, and I know what the pressure is from that angle, and I'm sure these officials are under that same pressure. All week they have had their meetings with the commissioner and the referee-in-chief, and they are under as much pressure as the ball players. And so far this afternoon, they've been doing an outstanding job. The minute flag is up. The clock down to the 30-second mark now, in the 30s at least, as the Stampeders are kicking on third down and eight. Jim Furlong to Harry Aboss. Aboss is stopped at the 26-yard line by Rankin, who is downfield, along with Brian Marshall. The kick traveled 40. The return is four. We now have 23 seconds left in the third quarter. 14 to 11. The Calgary Stampeders still lead. Anderson goes to the right. Simon flared out with Mike even left. This is Leon McClay. 31-yard line. He's met by Wayne Harris, number 55, the 11-year veteran, the perennial all-star, and, of course, many times winner of the national award as the outstanding lineman, as he did this year. And Leon McQuay lines up here to the right of Joe Theismann. It's a single back, and Joe Theismann just a short pitch to McQuay. And Suderman, following that offensive guard who was pulling, fought to the outside along with Wayne Harris to make the stop. Barring penalty, this should be the final play of quarter three. Theismann never did get the ball. Desjardins is still over it. There hasn't been a flag thrown yet, Don. Well, the officials are there to attend to it. A legal procedure is the indication against the Toronto Argonauts. 
one of the times where the center wasn't quite sure what the number was. Everybody else on the offensive team had moved, and he was still sitting there with the ball. There is the signal from the referee, Harry Ross. So they take it back to the 25-yard line. Second down and 12 now. Time has run out, but of course the quarter cannot end at a penalty, so this should be the final play as Mike Eaton breaks to the right, Jim Henderson left. McQuay. Another marker throw on McQuay at the 25 that was the line of scrimmage, did not pick up any yardage. Orzani came across with Craig Coinzan, and Charlie Bray was out there giving some blocking help and may have been doing that blocking from the rear. We'll see. Here's referee Ross. It is clipping. Bray for Toronto. It has been declined by the Stampeders. Third down. They'll get the ball back on a kick when the fourth quarter gets underway. The score is Calgary 14 and Toronto 11. The 19. Don Chevrier with Russ Jackson as we get set to begin fourth quarter play in the Grey Cup game. The Stampeders have the edge in the scoreboard. That's what counts, 14 to 11. But in the stats at three-quarter time, you see the Argonauts have an edge in total yardage. Toronto now on third down and 12 will kick from the 25-yard line. The punter and position back near the 12. Down to Rankin at the 33 yard line. And Rankin reaches the 36 on behalf of the Calgary Stampeders, but a way back from the point Andrews Ishan met the ball and picked it 53 yards. We have a penalty marker now. Joe Forzani is being called for making contact, it appears, with Zen and Andrews Ishan. Let's see. Here's Zen and Andrews Ishan's kick, and uh, Joe Forzani, number 73, came in and knocked him down, and this will be an automatic first down for the Toronto Argonauts, and that's the second time this afternoon that the Calgary Stampeders have been called for contacting the kicker. There are two possible penalties. One is for roughing, the other for contacting. This means a first down, no yardage marched off from that point. And now we have number 18, Greg Barton, at quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts to begin this fourth quarter. John, this has to be a tough decision for Coach Cahill because if Greg Barton can excite this offense, then he has to be the great coach. But if he doesn't, they'll say, well, why didn't you need Joe Theismann? Well, let's see what Greg can do. Bill Simon stepping to the outside, and Porzani has him there for a gain of about three. Bill Simons, not just a great running back, but a tremendous blocking back as well. Bill Simons on that last play, Don, carried around the right end, and both guards, number 57 and number 59, got to the outside, and Charlie Bray will see throw a block here, and Simons went around that block and gained about five yards. Make it second down and six to go now. 29-yard line, Toronto. Simons again. Furlong got a piece of him as he broke down the blocking of Roger Scales and throws him for a loss. And uh, Mike Eben has been injured at the 30-yard line. The Toronto flanker, number nine. Eben uh, is just back off a month's absence from injury, sustained in a game in Montreal, the one that clinched first place for Toronto. Greg Barton choosing to come back with almost the same play this time, but Jim Furlong playing on that side got inside there, and he managed to trip up the ball carrier, Bill Simon. And you see Mike Eaton lying on the ground there and almost seemed to make contact with one of his own men coming around the end. That, I, it appears, is what happened in collision with a teammate and Mert Proffitt, the Toronto trainer, helping him to his feet as the fans continue their party in the stands. Fans from all parts of Canada, in fact, a charter flight from Whitehorse has arrived here for this game. We are a minute and a half into the fourth quarter. It is 14 to 11 for the Calgary Stampeders as even now is at the Toronto bench and will take a rest. Third down and six to go. Andrew Zishin, the punter, dropping back to the 15-yard line. Calgary punt return men showing him plenty of distance. This kick is to Jim Shilya. Pops through at the 50. 
And Desjardins just got him by the two at the 53 yard line, or he might have had more yardage on that punch return. As it was, he picked up 12 and a 40 yard kick by Zenit Andrews Usher. The Stampeders have approximate midfield position. On the Calgary rush game, Zenit Andrews Usher, lots of room that time. They didn't want another contact in the kicker. And when Celia fielded this ball, he found the lane coming up there. And the lineman coming in a little too fast couldn't stop in time to slow him down until the Jardin got him. Gary Keeling, first down, stamp. Intercepted by Peter Martin. Martin held right there by Herman Harrison. It was into an area with both Harrison and Hugh McKinnis. But the interception is the second of the day against Jerry Keeling passes by Peter Martin. And Toronto goes first down from the 41. From our end zone, Cameron, attempt by Jerry Keeling with the blitz on here with Marv Lester coming in to isolate number 31, Hugh McKinnis, a halfback coming out of the backfield on the corner linebacker, number 77, Peter Martin. But Peter Martin got back in good position with Hugh McKinnis and made the interception. Mike Even is back in. He is out set to the right, right, right side for Toronto. Great part the quarterback. Martin on the screen to sign him. Not fool the Calgary Stan Peter defenders who at the 40 yard line have him for just about no gain. Jim Furlong hung in there along with Dick Suderman. It had to be a well read screen pass, Don, because actually on that play, Barton faked up the middle, and then when he did that, James, number 47, was the only one of the front four who put the pressure on Barton, almost as though the Calgary Stan Peters knew it was coming. Here we see Barton going back, giving a little fake. And number James, number 47, going in, putting the pressure on, but Halton and Suderman staying back and covering the screen. Second and ten. Bart. Too far. Cranmer was the nearest receiver, overthrown by about ten yards. He was covered by Larry Robinson. They both watched the football sail by. Third and ten to go now, Toronto. As the Argonauts continue to have offensive troubles here, they have not scored an offensive touchdown in this game. The only score by Roger Scales, who scooped up a loose ball and raced 27 yards in the third quarter. 14 to 11, Calgary is the score, as Andrew Zishin sets to kick. Jim Celia waiting at the 25-yard line. Rankin. Former Saskatchewan Rough Rider is taken down by Charlie Bray and a little unhappy about the rough manner in which the contact was made. 43 yards was and resistance kick. The only forecast that has not materialized so far was a tremendously high scoring game. You heard that all week here in Vancouver. While they still have time left, they have put a total of 25 points on the board and the Calgary Stampeders have 14 of them. Here's Keeling with a first down play. Keeling has 67 yards across the 30 as he was caught by Larry Bray in the middle linebacker who shifted to his left. And the score is Calgary 14, Toronto 11. The 1971 breakup game continues in just a minute. second to main here in the fourth quarter. 14 to 11, Calgary. Stan Peters getting set to go. Second down and five and a half. 31 yard line. Anderson. No gain. Mad as he tried to come back on that reverse on the right side by Dave Ramey and Tim Anderson, two defensive backs on the left side for Toronto, moving up to cover. Runs to third down. John, since that fumble and since the Toronto Argonauts have moved this post to the Argonauts in the score, 14-11, the Calgary offense has become much more conservative. Jerry Keeling isn't putting that ball in the air. They're trying to run the ball more. And in the play prior to that last one, he actually ran with the ball rather than throwing it away. Jim Furlong, number 70, the punter. Bouncing to Paquette at the quarter. And 
Paquette taken down right there. Rankin downfield, along with Perzani for the Calgary Stampeders, a 39-yard kick. The line of scrimmage will be the Toronto 40-yard line. Greg Barton remains at quarterback. Barton is one for three. He has not played a great percentage of this game. Joe Theismann was nine for 16 in passing with 186 yards. Bill Simon on the sweep. Good contact for Wayne Harris. Drops him at the 43-yard line. Charlie Bray gave Simons a block for a couple of yards, but no one took care of number 55. The gain is four. It'll be second and six. From the ground camera, we see Bill Simons coming around the end, and Charlie Bray again got a block on Frank Andruski, number 24, and Bill Simons trying to get around that corner couldn't because Wayne Harris, that outstanding middle linebacker for the Calgary Stampeders, just had great pursuit and great angle on Bill Simons, number 33. Nick Thornton, offensively, is on the right side, number 25. Henderson left. Simons. 48-yard line. Does not have the first down. John Heldon, number 77, met him. The Argonauts on that play had Simons and McQuay bunched together in an eye, and the Stampede defense, of course, was never sure which man had come through with the ball. In this case, it was the first one through, Bill Simon. Third down and about a yard to go, yard and a half between the 48 and the 49-yard line. Both teams complaining about the football being wet, but the officials can't do much about it. It's under a towel until they put it down. And resition. Another tremendously high kick. Backing Rankin up to the four-yard line. And he's back to the 12 where Joe Vijak, number 59, meets him for Toronto. And resition is averaging 41 yards plus in this game today. That one was in excess of his average, 59 yards. And at the 12-yard line, the Stampeders getting set to go first down. 8.23 on the clock here at Empire Stadium. That's the time remaining in the fourth quarter. Three points between the teams. Calgary 14 and Toronto 11. Hugh McKinnis to about the 15. Gain is going to be about two yards for McGinnis. The Stampeders actually got into the lead in the first half from the strength of a great running game. All their backs able to maneuver very well on the slippery turf. And the Toronto defense has contained that running game uh, considerably more efficiently here in the second half. With the result that it's a 14-11 game. 14-3 Calgary at half time. Second down. Rudy Litterman. Litterman at the 19-yard line is taken out by Larry Frame, number 52, and George Wells, number 53. And they are short by three of the first down. And so the score is Calgary 14 and Toronto 11. The 1971 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. Three minutes and 30 seconds to play in regulation time in the Grey Cup game. 14 to 11, Calgary. Jerry Keeling, looking for Henderson, hangs it up, picked off by Dick Thornton, 45-yard line. Thornton, room to go down the sideline at the 30. And at the 12-yard line, Dick Thornton has Toronto within scoring range, 2.26 to play. Two minutes left. McQuay, slipping, 11-yard line. Lost the ball. Pass the cover. That's the indication. The game is over, and the Calgary Stampeders have won their first break up 
since 1948. This has been a great year for me, uh, uh, Don, because I started off with 32 uh, the best football players in Canada in the All-Star Game, and I ended up with 32 of the best football players in Canada today, believe me.